Please, uh, today's commenter are uh, Cristina Nunez, uh, Katia Martins, and Lucia Jimenez. Please. Thank you. So, I, okay, I will be in charge of time, so I will tell you when you reach eight minutes, and I will ask you to stop when you reach ten. Okay. Because otherwise, we will be, you know, accumulating yeah. delays, and that's not the idea. Okay. So, it will be the bad guy. So, we are starting with okay. Marco okay. Martins. Okay. Yeah. I will try to be brief. Um, okay. Um, actually, my uh, uh, PhD study it's about um, to study the effectiveness of uh, uh, the long-term eff uh, effects of a parenting intervention in children, um, weight and obesity. Okay. Now I'm presenting you just a, a part of it that is like a, a practitioner's view on the implementation, on the delivery of the program because there are no much work developing on this area. And uh, um, regarding our previous presentation, it was very important to have actually insights from the practitioners to, to people that are, that are on the field. OK, so uh, this, this study um, shows um, a practitioner's view of, and experience uh, in delivery uh, group life type triple P, that is a, a parenting program. Um, for obese and overweight child, uh, children uh, in the context of a randomized control, control trial. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, I will uh, introduce a little bit the program. Uh, the group lifestyle triple P, it's, um, it's a parenting intervention for parents only uh, that targets uh, uh, children overweight, uh, obesity, um, and, um, and uh, uses three components like positive parenting, physical activity, and nutrition. Um, in order to address this kind of objectives that we have here, like to reduce Shannon's weight-related problems, Shannon-related outcomes, um, to reduce inf to use of uh, infective, uh, infective parenting by parents, and to um, increase parent self-efficacy, what will help to parents to engage in the program and to engage in more effective parenting. Okay. Um, this, this program, have, uh, the original format of this program is an e-read format. They have 10 uh, group sessions uh, in person and four individual sessions that are remotely. Um, uh, this, uh, we, in Portugal, uh, this, uh, it, was, it happens the pandemics over, all over the world, and we, uh, we developed a version that is completely online of this program. Okay? So, uh, most of our experience of implementing this program is in an online version. Uh, in Portugal, it works like that. Um, we work like just almost just with the online version. So, um, in Portugal, we uh, we um, we uh, the experience of uh, the practitioner is like they uh, in, this, in this case I um, I delivered the intervention for uh, five groups. Uh, 47 families are involved in this study. Um, you can see in this graphic that uh, at the beginning in the red bar, we can see uh, the, the, uh, the participants that are involved. Then we, we can see the participant that we have a little bit less participants that have at least eight sessions from a total of 40, uh, 14, sorry. And uh, the, the, uh, the blue bar represents the, retentions, the retention of the participants by the end of the program, OK? So we can see that it's quite similar, that we lost some participants. It's not too much difference. One thing that we can see is that the first one represents the in-person implementation, and the other one are all online, pre uh, 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 online uh, uh, delivery um, of the program. Uh, we can see that. Comparing the groups, of, uh, there are uh, higher levels of retention in most of the cases in the case of the online uh, delivery of the program. Okay, There are one except, exception this is, uh, that it is with this group, the last group, because it includes control participants from a control group and they, they are not so committed with intervention because they are pass a little bit, um, they are waiting a long time, and so some of them are not willing to participate so much as the others, and maybe this could explain this, okay? But remember, this is just one uh, implemented, one practitioner. We don't have um, too many data to, uh, to, um, to explore this uh, more in deep. Uh, in the case of, of the attendance, we have this graphic here, that we have blue bars represent 
the attendance in the, in the session specific and the red bar is like compensatory uh, compensation sessions for participants that uh, missed the session but actually contacted mm -hmm. the, the practitioner to have uh, uh, some kind of compensation of the session. So we can see that in the first two sessions, uh, from the first two sessions for the next ones, we, we have some, we lost some participants uh, as we are expecting, because there are people that are not committed, as we will talk later. Um, but after that, after the third session, including the third session, th there are a little bit constant. The attendance to the to the sessions are a little bit constant. Okay, there are not so many uh, so many par uh, parents that are skipping the the sessions. Um, one thing that I. <coughs> I will. Um, we 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 find is that there are some strategies that we can uh, say that are like key strategies of the program that really seems to have helped parents to um, to advance to to uh, to add some games with the program. One of them is parental monitoring. When parents learn to monitor, to uh, they they become more aware of what uh, what of. Um, children lifestyle behaviors and with this they they are more aware of something sometimes they they completely don't know that there are some problems with um, for example uh, see too much television for example or um, uh, it's too much junky food uh, and uh, it's it's interesting it's very basic but it's very it seems to be very important for parents actually parents knowledge on food types and uh, groups that they are learning in the um, in the in the sessions, are, it seems to be very important too because they they learn how to to do better choices uh, regarding to, to food. Sometimes they they see the advertisements and they they think that a, a food is healthy and they discover when they uh, they uh, learn how to read food labels that of course it, it, this is um, this actually this is not very good. I need to uh, to uh, search for an alternative more healthy. Okay. Um, other thing is like having uh, children try new foods, try to uh, to have children try new foods, changing recipes, like is is one thing. Limit limiting screen time. Um, one one thing that is important that I will focus here is like learning in um, learning basic or core positive learning strategies. This is uh, very important from the beginning of the program because. Uh, when parents learn how to implement some changes in a way more, in a more uh, effective way, they start to become more, uh, they feel more self-confident. They, they raise their self-efficacy and this promotes the engagement on the program. So maybe because of this, we can see that parents after, uh, th that come after here, they continue most of the times engaging with the program, okay? Um, and they feel more confident and they um, are uh, inclined to, to, to continue in the program. Eight uh, minutes now. Sorry? Eight minutes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. So, there are some experience in delivering the program that is like, okay, that we, we learned, that is like the first to deliver of the program, like the more uh, uh, demanding for the practitioners. Uh, flexibility, uh, there are prog uh, progressively better um, balance between uh, ensuring program fidelity and flexibility in the delivery across time, across deliveries. Um, and there are many tasks that are very time consuming. Uh, regarding uh, regarding the experience of the lifestyle uh, group lifestyle triple P, we see that the the online version has, has, has several strengths. One, it's like there are feasible uh, feasibility and acceptability studies uh, in Portugal that are published with the online version. Uh, it was accessible to more families that live more far away. Um, they are for, actually also. Um, more uh, easier for practitioners to uh, to uh, manage time during the sessions. Shortcomings between them, for example, we cannot uh, you, we have limited non-verbal communication. In the process of uh, the group lifestyle triple P, we also uh, find that um, uh, it's it's very difficult to manage um, manage uh, activities in the right time frame because there are lots of components and it's difficult. It's it's important for practitioners to use a very flexible approach to can uh, manage time in the activities. And one thing is like to address family's characteristic needs. It's important to to uh, for example make assignments specific for each family, for example, and eventually to go more in deep in the contents of the program. In 
in the individual sessions to specific that are specific important for that families. Okay, um, parents readiness for changing. I mean, it's now, so you should. Think, okay. Keep, but okay. Think uh, parents readiness. Sorry. Uh, parents readiness for change varies across families. This is a, a new, very important issue because sometimes uh, when we think about motivational interviewing, for example, um, parents are not in the right stage of change, and this is a problem because many uh, many problems dro uh, many parents could drop out because they are not in the right uh, uh, moment. So it's very important to have only parents that are really, really um, motivated to enter the program and work uh, in motivational interview strategies. To finish, I will just say that there are some implications for practices that it's like the practitioners in the beginning of the process need to have more um, supervision and support because they are a very demanding um, uh, program. And so the first part of the program is very important that they have that they have uh, very support. Inter recruitment is the same thing. We need to 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 find that parents are motivated, uh, not include uh, parents that are not motivated. We need to work the motivation of parents previously. Um, it's it's it, it was necessary more studies to to address the perspectives of other practitioners and also it's important for research to try to think how to um, to make room in this program for motivational interview strategies to to um, improve the retention in the program and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Marco, congratulations. I think your the topic, well, the, the Triple P is a very well-known program established by, based on evidence. And I think it's very interesting, this uh, project to unite uh, parenting, positive parenting with uh, health, promote healthy lifestyles and achieve a better outcomes in child's weight. Mm -hmm. um, some comments. Uh, now I understand more things about them because I only have read the abstract. Um, some questions. Where, what kind of indicators are you collecting about to assess outcomes from child wealth uh, and uh, behavior from parents uh, regarding habits of uh, Diet and, and food. Okay, well, we um, regarding the the outcomes of related weight related outcomes. Yeah. I think it was. Yeah. Um, we collect. Uh, we use the body mass index. Okay. They are they are assessed in a medical center by uh -huh. pediatricians, and um, we collect body. We compute based on the weight and weight and weight. Uh -huh. um, we compute body mass index z scores. And also, we use uh, in body and in body okay. to uh, to uh, to, uh, to uh, compute to uh, know the percentage of mm -hmm. uh, lean mass and uh, fat mass of the children. For example, mm -hmm. this is the main okay. uh, main outcomes. Oh, I don't think that I I didn't get if you say uh, what is the duration of oh, them. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, yes, I skipped that. You you said uh, seventeen that you... weeks. The duration the duration the weeks. duration of the program is seventeen weeks. Uh, four months. 70 okay. weeks, more or less, four months, but it's 70 weeks. Do you think you will get some outcomes in four months? Uh, the thing is, we it, this my project uh, extends to, to, to this is the duration of the program. Then to randomize control trial of a follow up period of six months. But then in my uh, PhD program, I um, I extend for uh, 18 months. The oh. program. And so, I, actually, it's very interesting because when I'm assessing in the last um, uh, assessment time uh, uh, moment, I see it's sometimes changes happening that are not happening uh, before. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Or or some yeah, problems, yeah, yeah. or actually some no, problems. No, because emerging. this these are topics very difficult. Well, parenting practices is already very difficult to change or to improve changing, uh, but. Uh, Habit foods, it's very difficult and it, it takes a long time to, yes. to change things in the family. Actually, literature points that uh, more extensive programs yeah. are better. Yeah. It's yeah. difficult because of the retention yeah. of participants, yeah. 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 but are better in changing yeah. behaviors yeah. 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 related to... Well, congratulations and now I Thank give rope to my colleague. Okay, good morning. Congratulations, Marco. I really uh, enjoyed your work. 
Um, I feel that you have four points that are very positive. One, that you, you have the point of view of the Prussianers. The, of the Prussianers, it's not quite often. Yes. Uh, other, that, for example, to develop a, a program where you have an online version in good app, and also you have these complementary compensatory sessions, I think it's a very good idea as well. It helps to the parents to um, um, continue with the, with the program yes. and uh, to fulfill uh, the sessions they cannot go. Uh, also, as Christina was saying, I feel that this field of intervention, because it's very specific, and I have, well, and I was say, asking, what are you going to um, control? Because you have so many um, confounders here, because as you said, it's not only the introduction of the program is also for example the motivation of the mm -hmm. parents the motivation of the child because for example in this type of intervention my ideas that um, uh, researchers also control for example the um, subjective norm because the groups are very important the family more extended the practice of this the more extended family the the, the pairs so um, I would like to see if you are controlling this type of information in order to have a more accurate view of your results. Um, and also the, the fact that you have group and individual sessions, I think it's a very good idea also, because um, you go to the needs of the family. That's it. You focus on the needs of the family, and I believe that it's very important. This is the part, actually, this is the interesting part when we are. I don't discuss it because the time is not so much, but the thing is, uh, it's at the beginning when uh, start implementing the program it's very difficult uh, a practitioner because uh, because of that i think it, it needs a, a lot of support but it's very difficult for a practitioner to be flexible because there are lots of components in the program where there are very strict times per, uh, for each component and in a duration that is very how can i say um ambitious for there are lots of things in a few time with limits for example time for discussion then we proceed, for example, our recommendation based on practice is that we will develop this kind of expertise that will lead us to a more flexibility and to ensure, uh, with this flexibility, ensure also the fidelity of the program. But, uh, um, but this kind of expertise uh, uh, really leads the practitioner to make options in the presentation of the program. For example, I have a, to present a component. I reduce the time in the component. I present it anyway. I reduce it. I, for example, I see that, oh, that's, this is important. I will raise, for example, time for discussion. And then in individual sessions, if that specific family uh, needs it, we can address that, the, 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 you know, and it's, uh, it's not annoying for the other people that are seeing that that's not. That's a very good idea. Um, I remember um, self-determination theory in the area of diets. They have lots of uh, um, considerations in regard to the rhythm of the sessions. Yes. Uh, it's uh, one of my concerns, personal concerns. Yes, but I, I believe some uh, research in that area, you can find some uh, important input. Thank you very much. I really so sorry. Okay, thank you. Lucia, thank you, Marco. I know your project a little bit, yes, so thank yes. you for bringing and, and, and having a new approach. I think the approach is very interesting for the topic of the training in school, so congratulations for that. And as colleagues said, having the view of practitioners, I think it's very relevant. Um, I will try to be short. I think the method uh, used to approach, I think it's a relevant one. I'm not suggesting to explain now, but just to think about if it's an open method, I think you can gain insights from um, from the practitioners. Uh, you explain a bit on the abstract, but I'm inviting to be more precise about, I don't know if you did content analysis, automatic analysis, or whatever. The, I'm not suggesting to reply now because okay. time uh, constrictions okay. are just telling that that's important so we can discuss later on. Okay. And so that's one piece. And uh, other piece for me is because we are focusing today on workforce skills and there is something related about the methods that the practitioners are using. I think the topic is that relevant at this stage, not only because COVID, but later on. And there is something about the methods used. And I, I was wondering, and I will tell something else and maybe you can uh, answer at the end. If you have fine literature around that, I, I have not been systematically reviewing, but yes, as you say, uh, the. Well, I don't know the, the, the no, but yes, 
but whatever review is that it's not systematic what it is, and there is not that much literature on that. So I think it's very interesting from the point of view of the practitioners. What are the you know the, the skills different that are needed of the methods, and there is a little bit around that, and, and I think that's important. And my last comment was about the view of the families, uh, not because we had we said we have to have the views, but because. Uh, for example, the, the, the approach we have on this come from the significant moment approach, that if you are not familiar with that, I'm inviting you to review it. Oh, sorry. Significant moments uh -huh. is an approach that comes from the psychotherapy that has been used from the 70s and 80s uh, to see what's going on, what's been more relevant. And it's, I, I will send you the, there's an interview and protocol for that. And it's quite open. And they start researching for both practitioners and families and then it has been in literature that uh, the most relevant is the, 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 the vision of, okay. not of the clients, no. of, the, not of the practitioners. Mm -hmm. So I invite him to include, well, this perspective of whatever it is, but uh, hearing the voices of families and being really open on that, what helped you more? Mm -hmm. Because then you can gain about the, I don't know, the alliance, mm -hmm. or can be the method, or can be the way that other, pe other person shares something. Yeah. So be really open on that. I just want to comment briefly, very briefly. Yes, please go. I please have in you. my study, in my study, I, in my PhD study, I have the last study is a qualitative one that hears to the perspectives of parents, of mm -hmm. families, about the change process across mm -hmm. To follow up after the program, mm -hmm. and so we we ask them about the components that are relevant, about those that are not relevant, about we put them to discuss about this, um, some um, some shortcomings that mm -hmm. appear to to have some strategies that they stop to use what they consider more important. For the, even after this experience, I don't know if it will be. Yes, it's yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, that's yeah, what that's... we did, yeah. but. Yeah. So thank you. I'm not talking to you about uh, interventions or evaluations of any programs, but I'm talking to you about the voice of the parent and also the importance of conceptualizing parenting um, in terms of, you know, designing interventions. So before I talk to you about the framework that emerged from our PhD. Um, I will explain a little bit about my data collection and what my PhD was about. So the topic was Parenting in Ireland, uh, Polish Perspectives on Child Rearing and Help Seeking. And I did a qualitative data collection with 16 uh, Polish migrant parents, which were residing at that point between 4 and 14 years in Ireland, um, had children between the age of 0 and uh, 11, so they were all still in primary school education. And I also interviewed 10 service providers, which provided family support uh, on various levels. So we would have had educators, um, family support workers um, involved in the data collection. Um, my research questions were, um, what, is the, what are the cultural values and norms of uh, Polish migrant parenting? What was the experience of parenting in that particular Irish neighborhood that they lived? and also where they sought help when they had any issues in terms of parenting. So quite interesting, um, the parents all felt that um, their parenting practices and norms derived from their childhoods in Poland, um, very traditional family settings with par uh, fathers being more um, authoritative, whereas mothers were more gentle, the typical traditional gender roles that we would um, know and that there was very little reliance on the Polish state when they grew up because policies and um, so there was high dependence on, on uh, family support uh, amongst, you know, with grandparents and things like that. So um, service providers, when we asked them what they felt the, the norms were, were rather kind of referred to more negative characteristics. So, you know, very stubborn, um, very private, so not much you know, engagement with, with other cultures or other people. And um, when we asked then Polish parents the, the kind of issues that they encountered while they were parenting in Ireland was that um, while they were, you know, very much informed by the traditional norms that they had brought over from Poland, they felt obviously they had to adjust to the new environment. But because of social policy, uh, policies in Ireland, 
they um, didn't feel supported. So, you know, a lot of shift work was going on. Parents would have tried to um, spit uh, laborers so that they wouldn't have to take childcare. So a lot of the old traditional values that they brought over were still part of the parenting. Um, when we asked service providers, again, they felt, well, we don't have any migrant, Polish migrants engaging with us, so obviously everything must be fine. So there was no real awareness in the service provision of, of the needs. And then when it came to help seeking, uh, service providers didn't uh, have any Polish migrants. And if they did, it was more uh, close to the scale of uh, social, social work. So more serious cases where they felt that there was some, um, you know, maltreatment um, of children, that that was the engagement. But other than that, there wasn't. And parents themselves felt that um, they weren't supported in terms of um, language maintenance, which was probably one of the, the biggest issues for for those parents, they, because they wanted to hold on to their old traditions and family connections, language was a big uh, barrier and um, felt that they couldn't uh, access uh, the, the accurate supports for them in, in Polish. So they rather not engaged at all and tried to get support from either uh, Polish friends or, you know, transnational um, families coming over to, to help. So that kind of led me then to think, OK, we have no conceptual conceptualization of this concept. We know a lot about parenting. Um, everybody knows Bronfenbrenner, determinants of parenting, Belsky. Um, then a little bit more into culture would be super hardness. So they would have, um, you know, the culture niche model mm -hmm. and specifically the ethno theories. And I said, OK, we have to create something that more accurately explains um, kind of the, the concept of migrant parenting. So I started off with looking at um, uh, super and hardness uh, ethno theories and derived from the, the findings that I had from talking to the parents. So the foundation, the implicit ideas that uh, came were from their own childhoods. And they were obviously then the specific uh, parenting practices that their parents held. So authoritative, uh, authoritarian parenting, the mix that they tried to then uh, negotiate when they came over. And this negotiation between the old tradition and the, the new environment that they were in resulted in the actual parenting. So I can explain this in more detail. I just don't have enough time. So in a normal context, this ethno theories would be placed in front from Brenda's ecological model because we don't parent in isolation, we parent in the ecological model. Mm -hmm. And again, um, Bond from Brenner has often been criticized, and I agree with this criticism, is that culture should not be situated on the macro level, but is actually permeating all layers. Mm -hmm. So we really need to be conscious that it doesn't only affect uh, you know, the culture on a national level, but it's a very personal um, experience as well. So in an ideal world, as you know, we live here, so we would probably be positioned in this, but when you come into the migration context, you live in two, two contexts, and a lot of um, migrants are now, uh, it's a very transient nature migration. It doesn't necessarily mean that because you move here now that you're not going to return back home. Mm -hmm. So you will probably, uh, you know, remain, have some connection to your pre-migration uh, context, and as such, migrant parents constantly try to negotiate the pre-migration and the post-migration context while having all these different influences. So I think this model is useful and I obviously have to develop it a bit further in terms of you know trying to design interventions or policies to take this into consideration, if that makes sense. So I, I could talk loads more, I just tried to convince. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Yes. So uh, thank you very much, Kelly, for your presentation. It's a very interesting work. It's a little bit different because uh, it's the contrary. You go and analyze the the track and the context in order to develop a model to just to um, bring this information to understand how this is functioning. So it's very interesting, uh, and the fact that you uh, somehow you connect two point of two different point of views and show that in fact. Uh, not uh, not all the time the child services and the social services sorry have an accurate view or uh, comprehend the view of the parents so it's very 
um, very interesting this uh, this uh, study and also the the final uh, aim of the project that is uh, to develop a theory that help uh, academics and uh, researchers to understand and the uh, practitioners to understand that in fact there are several um, uh, are, say, yeah. Yes, of course, of, in the, the importance of the culture. Yes, so there was in Violet mm. also, she was uh, um, showing the importance of the culture in the start of research. That uh, in here, it's something that we have now in our countries because when we have migrants, they are, in a, for example, we have refugees from mm -hmm. Ukraine, mm -hmm. and it happens that they came, but the, their expectations is to go back. So, yeah. this in time of uh, intervention, it brings some challenges yeah. because yeah. they have they are between cultures, yeah. but they are more connected with their own culture. Exactly. So, uh, congratulations with your yes. uh, point of view. Thank you. Well, I have to extend the congratulations, and I think that it's so relevant that we have a real cultural lens when we are doing cultural research. So, thank you for that because Thanks. there is so much you know, transnational research that yeah. is not really exactly. culturally based. So I think yeah. it's that relevant. I also will speak, I won't be telling you, of you for so much time, but um, I have some thoughts that I wanted to share with you. First is that my, I would say, very local experience with refugees families uh, particularly, uh, mostly, is that, uh, and, well, so I try to order. I don't know, you have explained why Polish families are particularly relevant for your context? So they were they're the largest ethnic minority okay. and also the in terms of ch uh, children and families they would be the largest well before the Ukrainians but again you know they're more settled now so but that's you why have we, we picked. And, uh, and well I guess there so for me there are several variables that can be influencing that like the time that they have been there I don't know if they are just newcomers yeah. or the, the age of children so I will try to order all my ideas. Yeah. First is I think the qualitative approach is a very good one because you we have our own cultural lens, you know, better than me. So then as much as you are open, you are not using your levels when you are uh, researching. But because of the diversity and the heterogeneity, I don't know the, the specific profile, apart from being Polish, of these families, I guess, that have been... They were quite similar. That's why I, oh. I looked at, like, the age group was all around the same. So we looked at okay. primary education in terms of developmentally, uh, the children being de developmentally more influenced by their parents. They hadn't transitioned yet into mm -hmm. adolescence, so that's why we took and that they First generation and they have yeah, yeah. arrivals or they yeah. have been for... There have been, some, um, some of the parents would have been there for 14 years, but the children would have only been born. So they were all around the same age group. Mm -hmm. So just because you reside, if you haven't been a parent, you're still going to adopt, you know, because you haven't been a parent. I presume you're, or I wouldn't presume, but your idea around parenting would still stem from your own childhood. So you wouldn't have had any any other experience around parenting unless you moved mm -hmm. with your child to, to, yes. to Ireland, if you know. Yeah. And, and, I, and they have been for, you say, four years? Between four and fourteen, some of the parents. Okay, mm -hmm. because in, as I told you, the experience I had with really newcomers and their refugees is that parenting is not a problem. I mean, let me explain that much. That is, it's not the most important issue mm -hmm. because, and, and then my reflection goes around the ecology, not only in terms of culture, but around the parenting, because there are so many urgencies. And I think it was commented yesterday in yeah. the work that I suggest the inclusion of that. And, and I was also wondering if, how can you um, consider that as moderators, as you have this qualitative data, maybe the relevance of having those, those variables as, as moderators there. Um, mm -hmm. So that's something and the other i don't know if you're familiar with the framework of williams that is specifically for refugee parenting but he's reframing the ecological model of brown family okay, so maybe you should okay, have a look at um, it well again i can send but i think that can be interesting and i think i will stop here well just one question about the methodology and i'm sure you have planned but i guess you are thinking about content saturation, I don't know what the saturation of the content yes. is. Yes. 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 It was that we used, it, uh, for transparency, we used a framework approach of analysis, so okay. it's used in policy work just to be sure that there's no bias in terms of, you know, okay. being inside and outside our research. So yeah, we took care of all of that. Okay. Uh, they mean in terms of content, uh, whether you're doing... Uh, yeah, we did saturation, analysis. yeah. Okay, great, thank you. Well, that's me. Thank you. Uh, congratulations, I think that's very interesting. Um, 
working with migrant parenting about that and to construct a model that integrates all the all the reflections. Um, I wonder, are you going to uh, only interview 16 families or? Do I'm you done. Think... So my study is done. Oh, so your this study is yeah, done. This okay. my okay. Yeah. So ideally, I would try this out with another migrant group. Okay. So yeah. that would yeah. be my, yeah. my idea yeah. of my. That, that I, I was going to yeah. say that because I think yeah. it would be interesting to to know if uh, what you find here, mm. some features are similar to another migrant uh, groups or not. Yeah. I recommend, I don't know if you, you, if you read it, um, in USA there are a, a lot of work about immigration and migrants. I work with loads of these in the oh, US okay. already. <laughs> okay, 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 because they have uh, really interesting Thank approaches. Yes, and I agree with Lucille when she says that to introduce some moderators, uh, like how many years uh, they have been, other thing that uh, uh, how long their children are in in preschool or in nursery, because I think that's influenced a lot. Maybe, maybe that's influenced. There, there would be, there was some nuances, and again, yeah. it's qualitative. So I have yeah. this written up, yeah. and you can, yeah. you, you know, if I could present the findings yeah. of that, yeah. you can see it. It's just very yeah. hard to present yeah, of course. so much qualitative course, yeah. data nuanced yes. in, yes. you know, yeah. in a shot. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Interesting topic, really. Congratulations. Thanks. And maybe there are some comments. Any comments or questions for the colleagues? Maybe Please. I could just, yeah, uh, I don't yeah. really necessarily have a question, but uh, we, we already spoke yesterday, we have a common uh, interest, so now I'm thinking about my research and maybe um, doing this model with uh, refugees who are forced, forcibly displaced and maybe not necessarily think about going back. So from Syria, Afghanistan and so on, so people who are thinking, okay, this is my destination now and I am not thinking about going back to my country, so how is that affecting um, the, this model, but yes, I think uh, we should talk. That's it. Thank you. Thank you for this research. It's amazing. Anybody? Yes, tell me. Hi. Thank you for your clear presentation. Thanks. I'm sorry, but I don't know because I'm asking. Uh, why there Polish migration to your country? Are there expats or they migrated for Political reasons? Economic reasons. Economic so reasons. Generally economic, economic reasons. reasons. Yeah. I'm wondering this because it's important for Chicago. What are their education levels? Um, quite mixed. So Polish uh, migrants are generally very well educated, but um, there is also a lot that really just, they were unemployed and they moved to Ireland. So it was a mixture of samples. Sorry that I didn't explain the sample no, no, in more detail, no, no, but no, no, yeah. Well. So yeah, there would have been a mixture of, you know, both working class and, and highly educated, so. Thank you. I have, well, I have a question. Yeah. And um, what do you think about child abuse potential of these parents? Child abuse? Potential. potential. Is potential. it high or not? Um, do you have an observation about it, child abuse? Um, it would be on the radar. And they, it's generally males that have been uh, engaged with, you know, either family support or social work. And they kind of lead it back to saying, but this is, you know, this is what fathers are like. We are dominant. We we rule you know this is normal for us so yeah there is a potential and it could probably go unobserved if there's not more engagement i personally think thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank uh, i'm a teacher in a secondary school and i learned many years ago that it's impossible to think about the well-being of our students if we don't uh, work with their families at the same time so uh, I appreciate a lot this big opportunity to, to learn with us uh, about supportive families um, in their educational work. I think it's very important, so I'm, I'm so happy to be here. Um, this is not my PhD project. Uh, I'm a part uh, uh, of a uh, research team uh, of my director 
Francisca Farinha Rivera, and uh, part uh, two in a um, in, in a UNESCO star in UNESCO chair. Sorry, in UNESCO chair uh, about uh, a change in education. Mm -hmm. Uh, who is worth uh, about um, around the the goals uh, of agenda uh, 2030? Mm -hmm. But uh, my my PhD is is related to family school, so I I will tell you I will tell you something about this. Uh, the uh, this uh, this project is about uh, um, two two main aspects. Um, uh, in one hand, uh, the positive uh, parenting and the positive parenting programs, and in the other hand, the family schools. So the director is supporting families through family schools, skills and abilities. Mm -hmm. um, the main aspect I, I, I like to, 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 to tell to, to you um, is a, a little bit background. And uh, coming on, um, where and when everything begins. Uh, as we uh, said, uh, the professor uh, Raquel Amaya, uh, this, this year is, is really important for us, the, the year 2006, because it's when the European Council, as, as she said, has uh, published its recommendation uh, on policy to support, uh, to support positive parenting. Uh, since then, um, positive parenting refers, um, I read because it's a definition, okay. mm -hmm. uh, positive parenting refers to parental behavior uh, that, is, that is based on the best interests of the child, so, so this point is so important, is supportive, develops the child's skills, uh, the first important thing is not violent and uh, provides recognition and guidance, including certain limits to allow the child's uh, food develop development. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, the, the, the positive parenting appears <coughs> before 2006, uh, obviously, but uh, this, this year is, is, is really important because, uh, as uh, Rokin Amaya said, as, um, they encourage the, the, the state and the local uh, authorities to make um, policies uh, to support families. Uh, how um, I, I think, for example, uh, with meetings with, uh, we are having here now, uh, uh, where people sharing this project, uh, sharing this, uh, 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 this experience and stuff is, is so important. Uh, Spain works a lot with this. <laughs> Uh, I think uh, is the is the fourth uh, country of provenance of scientific literature of uh, positive in, uh, in, in, in positive parenting, and um, in fact here uh, is with us Rakina Maya, uh, who who uh, she she uh, developed our most uh, popular and um, and the most uh, implemented positive parenting program uh, here. We have uh, some characteristics of positive parenting uh, programs uh, in terms to contents um, and to, to target and, and to outcomes. Uh, I, I haven't got time, so I want to do to it. Um, uh, I, I think uh, making policies um, uh, uh, for making policies that support families is necessary um, to involve to research uh, for from universities that's, that's okay but uh, the, it's important to um, an agreement with social uh, uh, with social uh, statements that uh, put this research into practice and here is where uh, our project is located uh, in my PhD, uh, we, uh, we, we made um, an important study of Galicia, I live in the north, in Galicia. And uh, we talked with uh, every single school uh, since, uh, uh, not primary school, uh, preschool, you mean? Yeah. Uh, Infantil? Infantil? Preschool, yes, preschool, uh, to, second, to, to secondary mm -hmm. school. 
Uh, we talk uh, by phone uh, with around um, uh, 1,500 uh, uh, schools. And we, t we talk with them uh, by phone um, uh, about um, the, the, the parenting, the positive parenting or the parenting programs or, or, or things uh, that they made it. And, and really, uh, positive parenting don't exist, don't, don't exist in, in the schools. Uh, so uh, we decided uh, to, uh, this, uh, to 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 make our our own uh, uh, school for families, and I create uh, we create uh, our school for families in a, in, in my high school, and uh, then we sent uh, to, uh, to 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 government of Galicia a project uh, who was accepted. Uh, so we have uh, two more uh, school for parents in Galicia by, by their support. Uh, the, our objectives is uh, the first one is to analyze if good practice and interprofessional competence uh, are implemented in our family school uh, after the, the, the explanation for, for the professor. Thank you, for, professor, for, for, your, uh, for your work, for your important work. Um, yes, we, uh, the idea is, is, the, is, is to use the guide of, uh, of interprofessional competence in positive parenting and the guide of the good, good practice in passing to the public since being. Um, this is so great for, for, for us because uh, uh, we have um, an important um, uh, researchers from universities and and we have um, the the the, um, the schools uh, together and and, and 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 together with the politicians that, and this is this is important um, uh, the other um, objective is to verify if families are satisfied with the program after the, the experience. Uh, for this, uh, we use um, minutes. Okay. For this, uh, we use a satisfaction survey specifically designed for our research. And the last one is to find out if there are differences it, there are differences in the characteristics of positive parenting at home before and after the positive parenting program uh, at the family school. For this, uh, we use uh, an adaptation of international parental survey. Uh, it was developed as a planning tool to help policymakers and company agencies and agencies to, to evaluate the programs in different countries. So um, I think that's it. It's a quick uh, explanation of methodology. I, I, I invite you to read. And the, um, the pictures are from my, my parents' school uh, here in a funny activity in a role playing. And here in a, in a party. <laughs> this is me and my, my dear parents and some of my college and, and the director of my high school. Uh, so we, we have uh, we are sorry um, uh, a happy family so a big uh, happy family so thank you thank you. I, I have to say always I see a practitioner that is doing the PhD I say so great you are I don't know if crazy but. They don't, it's that work for anyone that is not uh, having a second job, but you have a second job. So yeah. congratulations for that. And as you say, I fully agree that is that relevant. You know that research is, is integrated with practice. That is what we have been seeing in lectures and also in your in your presentations. That, and that reflects, I think, uh, um, this now development that we have in our area. That this is not external programs that we are going and implementing, but this is in, in the context and that the ecological validity of what we are doing that is a principle for our network. And, and I think the work of all the teams that are mm. uh, in this training school represented. And on that regard, I would like, well, I have a few comments again, I want to be short. Yeah. Uh, I um, was wondering, uh, maybe you did in your abstract, but I read all of them and I forgot it. Um, so to make this sustainable, what I think is that relevant, that are the, the educators that are working with families that are providing the intervention, 
I think that's one of the, the, as I said, of the developments of the approach, maybe because I come from educational and developmental psychology, and mm -hmm. we had more programs designed outside to be included in the schools, and I don't think that's the idea, but having uh, the educators uh, involved in that. So um, one of my questions is, uh, if you are playing go to scale, it's not only one school, if I understood, because mm -hmm. you're playing small. Uh, actually, we have, we have the three schools. Okay. Three, three schools for parents. Yeah. So what about the, the, the practitioners? The practitioners, Who will yeah. be, and uh, how are the training? So that's one of my questions. Yes. In my case, uh, uh, I'm... I'm uh, I, uh, I, uh, my PhD is about this, mm -hmm. so I read a lot of, uh, of um, this uh, this uh, uh, research and things, mm -hmm. and I work with my director. So mm -hmm. I I am the practitioner in in, in my in my, the high school of my um, uh, my high school, mm -hmm. uh, and the other two uh, uh, the practitioner is a, is a doctor. Uh, who made the doctorate with my with my uh, uh, director? So is uh, she's uh, highly prepared for for the work. And, uh, and, and uh, your plan is to implement something that. Uh, so what your intervention is based? Uh, yeah. Our intention is is put into the table that is is is, is easy to 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 to, to, to do this mm -hmm. and. And uh, when when we sent to to our project to to La Junta de Galicia and, mm -hmm. and they adapted, uh, we are so happy with this because it's a little bit a step for mm -hmm. for um, for contribution to, to the community to to to, to put it to practice uh, every interesting uh, uh, research from universities. So this this is the, the most important thing for us. But you are using so something that is a prepackage, the, the, the no, program that's prepackaged, but you are... No, at the moment. Okay. We have a, oh, just to know. No, yeah, yeah. The, the, um, we have an important uh, uh, pro parenting program, same thing. Mm -hmm. But um, perhaps we in the future, uh, uh, Galicia, uh, we, we haven't any, any um, specifically mm -hmm. a positive parenting program. But uh, perhaps in the future, why not? Mm -hmm. But. Uh, well, and I have a final comment that is about the methodology. And um, I don't remember the method that you were using for practitioners' uh, skills. I think it was qualitative, but for the quantitative piece that you're suggesting, a quasi experimental design, mm -hmm. I would consider the inclusion of a control group, you know, to see if. It yes, yes. We, we, we use a, a control group, yes. In, um, in the, in the three, the three groups, yes. And for satisfaction, I would recommend I, we will use the client satisfaction questionnaire, it's the most published questionnaire in the world and it's so easy you have three four uh, eleven item versions so i wouldn't suggest to go for another document uh, questionnaire but this one that is free accessible and but more easy to publish i would say so yeah. i can get you later on thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. so congratulations for the work it's uh, your the, yeah. um, Positive parenting is something Sorry. Positive parenting is something that we already yeah. talked about here uh, in the in this, uh, training course, but also in us it's very it's uh, it's uh, very present. So uh, for me, from Portugal, I have a special admiration because in Spain there are so many uh, work done out in programs with uh, and already yeah. tested that are so inter interesting, so um, I was, my first ask, um, question was, are you go, are you using some program, some structure or some part or? Yes. Yes? Um, no, no, not, not a, a, a complex program, um, because uh, mm -hmm. we, uh, the first, uh, first uh, step we, that we, we had is um, um, uh, ask the parents what, uh, what um, aspect, uh, what uh, uh, objectives they, they can uh, do it in, in the school for parents. And uh, with this, we prepare different sessions, um, but uh, we used the, the positive parenting uh, activities. The, 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 the basic uh, Mm, programs uh, uh, of this uh, we use that we use them. So could tell to, uh, to the yes. presentation it's yes. like gold for you. Yes, 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 yes. Because what I feel is 
Sorry, oh. because I'm, I'm very nervous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, just to think. But, yeah, but no. uh, do no. you understand me? Okay, okay. Don't okay. Worry. okay. Uh, just two things. One is that um, I understand that you have the best interests of the parents in mind, but sometimes there are some supportive resources that can help us to structure and to identify themes and to work with entities that are already tested, and we can use it to work with the, the parents. So uh, this is one thing, because I, was, I have a question mark here about the design of the study, so because um, I feel that uh, if you're going to use a quantitative approach, you have and you, it's a quasi-experimental study, you have been very aware of type of instruments, what are you measuring, what are you controlling, and this is very important for you to test the results in, uh, of the, the program. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, I, uh, I, it's, it's very important um, for me that uh, um, they take it to care because uh, they, 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 we have a, a lot of uh, important cost experiments in the RAINS programs in Spain. Yes. Uh, uh, and they are uh, very important in school, in schools, so we, we, uh, we don't need to, uh, to make different uh, activities. For, um, yes, of course, yes. Another aspect is, for example, the, fam the, the, the um, expression, family schools. Yeah, the family schools. Yeah. Yes, very well. Um, it's just sometimes family schools try to be a little academic uh, because, um, well, sometimes parents, and I think Raquel already spoke about the importance of uh, expectations. When they say school, they are going to, to learn. But, for example, nowadays programs, uh, the third generation, as specific uh, orientations in regard to this type of interventions that I believe you should uh, also um, take, in a, think, take in account so you are developing and uh, uh, designing this, uh, this approach. And, but uh, congratulations because this type of uh, initiative in schools is very important and still as you were saying is and uh, you are hoping to see uh, very good news in the end of your PhD. Congratulations. Thank you. So, um, Veronica, congratulations. Uh, my colleagues have already put a lot on this, a lot of comments and suggestions. I only want to want to alert you for one thing, because I, if I understand uh, well, uh, you, the practitioner will uh, assess with parents their satisfaction about the program. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. I would say that it would be better that some of that assessment could be made by other colleagues of you Sternally. out of the mm -hmm. team because that introduced uh, a lot of bias. Mm -hmm. uh, namely, when uh, you are asking to parents, would you, uh, if you like the program that I applied, what they are going to say? Yes, yeah. it was the most. Yeah. So yeah. It, it's good to, at least in some aspects, we we look for this a, a Google form. Uh, yes, form. a Google form. Uh, so, uh, ah, you need not be asking that. Okay. We don't ask them. Okay. Ask that directly. Another question that it was not clear to me: that family schools are uh, uh, destined to what kind of parents? It's an universal program. What are the parents? Are families at risk, are uh, indicated, selected? You know, it's universal? No, it's universal. We include uh, uh, every parent of, of this students. Of okay. And another question that I don't remember if you told, told us is how many sessions and what, what are the aims of the program? Mm -hmm. It's to improve knowledge, uh, it's to work uh, competence, parenting competencies. How many uh, sessions and how long? We asked uh, to the parents. Uh, what? The, we asked to the parents. We asked to okay. the parents, and 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 with with this information, uh, we make a program, a, a, a program with uh, different activities and different sessions. No? Um, we uh, work uh, with uh, them since uh, November to, to June, mm -hmm. uh, once uh, a day a week, okay. one, uh, once a week, sorry, um, at, for two hours. 
Okay. All, all uh, for, uh, around uh, 15 or 16 sessions. Okay, 15 or 16. Okay. And do you have uh, many um, abandoners? Dropouts? No. No? No. Okay. I'm a lucky, a lucky. Yeah, you are a lucky one. one. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, but uh, this is a, a happy place uh, and, a, and a happy moment for for the wow. for the for the participants and a happy yes. moment for for the yes. practitioners too. So, yeah. so okay. So, thank congratulations. you. Congratulations. A comment there? Yeah, I have a question regarding participants also. Thank you so much for your presentation. Yes, thanks. Um, the the rate of attendance. What what is it? Because uh, you don't have dropouts, but in the proportion of the whole uh, educational community, mm -hmm. how many parents, families do you have? There, hundred percent, or just a part of the from school to school that participates. We invite all the parents of the of the of the school, mm -hmm. not of the school. Sorry, uh, uh, in the, the in the first level uh, and the, the first course of the secondary school. Okay. To third. Uh, invite all the parents, and we have in our schools around 25 uh, persons. Mm -hmm. 25, 25 families? families or uh, families. families? Families, yeah. Oh, so okay. and, and they all participate, the 25 yes. participate, yes, yes. all. Okay, cool. Around this, okay. Can I just put a question? Yeah, of uh, I really like your research, it's a, a really applied research, and I. I, I find it very interesting that it's driven by the objectives of parents. They, they, the objectives are not press the wish it, but you still wish it with parents. And it's, it's very, I think, fulfilling for parents and for uh, practitioners. I, I see that you don't have a, a very high retention rate, but actually maybe uh, if this is just a concern that I'm putting to you, that is like, are you not losing the parents, those families that need, are in need, that sometimes they are, uh, how can I say, ostracized or how can I say, put in a park because they don't feel like, okay, they are the, the ones that want this kind of uh, stuff, the, the ones that are, uh, how can I say, mm -hmm. well integrated, mm -hmm. and the other ones feel, uh, feel uh, how can I say, treated to go to that room. It's just a concern that I, I think, I don't know if you, you already think how to explore how to call these parents and how to... This is really difficult. Okay. It's really difficult. But uh, in this case, I try to invite you in a special form. Uh, and we, we use for inviting people, for inviting families, uh, we send a uh, letter. Mm -hmm. Not 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 our means, uh, the center, the, the, the school. Uh, but with these families, I uh, talked to. Uh, by phone with yeah. with them and try to yeah, to, uh, yes, explain the program and uh, and sometimes it works. You can you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Lucia? Yes, I want to make a final comment, and it's uh, no, 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 the final because Raquel wants to comment also. But because we are talking about express needs, and I think Silvana just the presentation was about that, and it's very relevant that we are yeah. doing, and, and I'm been referring to ecological validity. But we cannot forget our explanatory models, and you have there about the explanatory models. That is what we should be working with. That is what theory and empirical research yeah. tell us we have to work with. So we have to research what's on the on the on the literature. And I know it's it is so I'm just using no, as an excuse no, no, no. to make this explicit. And also the model of change that I think is very relevant. So how do parents learn? And that's very important that, that we are conscious yeah. about what's the methodology and then uh, methodology yeah. <laughs> yes. Insisting person, but I think it's very relevant. So I'm not saying that it's absent, just use yeah, an excuse yeah, to make yeah, this explicit. Yeah. Sorry, Raquel. Okay. Please. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you thank very you. much for your work and your presentation. I think uh, we are really very brave uh, from the parking from a secondary school, mm -hmm. uh, which is very, very difficult yes. to, to work with parents in that context uh, to create what we call uh, family schools in Spain, which I agree with you that uh, sometimes uh, the, the, the term school would be changed. Yeah. But yeah. Um, my, my understanding is that you are doing the best steps uh, to go further in creating the, the culture in this schools to invite parents to come, to learn from uh, the, the many things they probably let they, 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 they you know they, they, they need. And you are approaching the institutions now. 
So um, I think you are doing uh, you are doing a great job in in in, in going uh, step yeah. by step by creating so the, the the foundations of what uh, probably is going to be a uh, a more organized uh, world later on. Um, my understanding is that you are working. Uh, um, by in these sessions, uh, not with a real organized program, mm -hmm. but picking up from the problems yeah. you know, uh, mm -hmm. what is mm -hmm. going on, uh, what what is would be uh, the, the best for those needs you are uh, identifying in the families by uh, this mm -hmm. key <clears throat> assessment. Mm -hmm. So um, even. Uh, uh, my, my understanding is that you are now creating the foundations and probably you do not go further in, in organizing a, a more research methodology, but uh, it's the first thing. And for going further, you of course need to, to realize what the needs are and how the institutions are going to support you for doing that and, and these schools. It's really very, very difficult to work in, 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 a, in secondary schools where many times teachers Mm -hmm. don't uh, really um, appreciate this and um, uh, there are a lot of barriers. So thank you very much for the work thank and you, the thank effort you are doing. In my school, I'm a teacher in this school, so it's easier. Uh, but uh, I invited the the, 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 my colleagues to, my, to, the, to the school. And it's so, so great. I invited the director, I invited to, to the math teacher, and it's a, 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 an important uh, experience and a nice experience. Systemic change. Yeah. Systemic change. Yeah, yeah. it's not yes. yes. And, and it, the experiences are, are really, really nice. People, people are happy there with the, with the teachers, and, mm -hmm. and the teachers with the parents, and it's a... It's a party, it's a party, an emotional yes, party. It's a way of, of, of building partnerships between parents and, and the teachers mm -hmm. through uh, parenting yeah. activities. And, and learn to eat each other. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We have to move now, sorry, yeah. we can talk. Thank you. Would you like to guys in advance on my not so good English? Not okay. apologize. Not a problem. Anyone is apologizing. Yeah. 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 Um, the topic of uh, this uh, presentation is increasing the uh, competences of uh, specialists from the social sphere to through uh, training and introducing a good practice. This is uh, my idea for the project. And I'm in the beginning of this, uh, the realization of this idea. And uh, we, will, we will talk about this. Why uh, training and sharing the good practice are of high importance? Why? Um, the family is uh, a complex phenomenon, social, relational, emotional, human, natural, the kind. In working with the families is very, uh, very difficult task. Uh, I uh, am focused of two very difficult for working topics, adoption and parental conflicts, where it is necessary to, um, to work uh, with all the um, members, all members of family, no one member. Uh, my purpose is um, training primary specialists working in the social services, in government social services, and uh, the trainings will be um, 
made from, from the specialists from the angels angel area. Uh, training for professional work with difficult speaking topics is extremely important from the point of view of preventing errors in daily work in children and families. Um, why these two topics, adoption and parental conflicts, are too important and why I'm focused on them? Um, my um, experience, my professional experience for more years, for uh, long time, I'm working on the first line with uh, families and children. And uh, my observation are in the base of uh, the, this idea. Uh, I'm on the first uh, step of the realization of this idea. And um, brainstormings are, are made. Part of um, interviews um, with uh, social workers are made. And uh, it is very important for uh, for starting the the next step. Uh, the next step will be analysis at the national level in the context of uh, the families, uh, adoption families and families with conflicts. Um, Working groups, focus group, information days, uh, meetings, official, official and parent groups, groups for um, support. Uh, of course, analysis of good global practice on both topics and preparation of proposal for the day. Inclusion a part of good social practice. Creation of training materials that will be useful for specialists from various fields, for magistrates and lawyers to psychologists, therapists, social workers and parents. And uh, expected results, increasing the competences, Increasing the level of professional self-confidence self and certification among the specialists from the social sphere. Prevention of professional burnout. It is, in addition, vibration, limiting staff turnover. This is uh, the increasing the level of user certification, possibility of overall increase, in the effect efficiency of social institution, changing the way in which the needs of adopted families and families in, with parental conflicts are served in Bulgaria. The Bulgarian context is more, more important. Um, our country is a poor country and uh, as uh, in each one world country, the social problems are more. And uh, that's why it's, uh, it's uh, very important to, um, to make service from family in these topics to be more quality. Uh, this is very difficult to, to make 
but uh, I think that uh, we will be a part of my doctoral work. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will be happy to make connection with, with you, everyone who um, can give me feedback or uh, materials or uh, um, point of view about the practice in these topics in your countries will be very useful for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will start this mm -hmm. time. We are going to turn over. Um, I think you have a very ambitious project. I don't know how many years you have to work in your PhD, but it's a lot of work. Um, some suggestions. I think you can, in this training school and with uh, people that have presented, uh, Raquel, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, John and, and Avenka, ourselves, you can talk in, in the little breaks that we have or, and have our contacts because I think we can help with some things that you want to develop. Uh, also, I suggest to you to to go to our uh, net page, uh, Eurofarmnet, mm -hmm. because you, there you will find several tools that could be useful to you. Uh, reports, uh, papers, lots of things that I think could help you. Uh, namely, uh, you can talk uh, with us about the Delphi study we are developing that I think maybe you could do or focus group uh, in Bulgaria to to achieve some some of your aims from your work. Mm -hmm. um, another ask, uh, question that I have is if you have already uh, a, a program, a training program to to professionals of if it's in, you are working on that? Mm -hmm. No, at the moment, no, but I make efforts. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, because if you don't have anyone, there are uh, lots of programs that already have some uh, package to train professionals with yeah, and you can find that, that tool also in our net. I think that there are some programs that shows or indicates or indicates the training for practitioners. So mm -hmm. that's all. In my uh, usual uh, work, I'm uh, teaching uh, adoptive parents, mm -hmm. teaching. but um, this is uh, different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. To yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Lucia? Oh, yes. Um, we have another brave student because we're not practitioners that are on the front line. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, doing research. So thank you for that. And I agree with you. I'm not a um, specialist on adoptive families, but I know because I have a college that I think is well recognized internationally that is Jesus Palacios, is someone that maybe I can write the name and you can follow. Because they they have been establishing in Spain, uh, well at least in the south, I don't know what it was, but um, the work with practitioners and also uh, later on for adoptive parents. So probably there is an interesting connection there. And I know there is uh, some specific th specific aspect that has to be considered. I think it's very interesting that you are focusing on attitudes because that's a relevant piece for the work with families, as you say, what are our expectations? I don't know who talked about the expectations, I think it was Raquel this morning. So what is the attitudes that the practitioners have? And we are talking about a specific kind of knowledge. And my advice on this is quite related with the advice I gave in the poster before. So with this, uh, I think it's very interesting that you are doing this 
with practitioners because again you are doing this ecologically valid you are doing based on the on the on the needs that you are seeing practitioners and and that's very important and and in this case i'm advising to check very well how attitudes are changed and and well and i and and maybe Raquel is more expert than me, can, can tell better than me, but I think that conceptual model change, for example, is a very important one to work on attitudes and to do it through an experimental, uh, sorry, an experiential methodology also. So maybe that can be uh, something useful. We had a connection from Working Group 4 uh, with, I don't remember the name, it's a um, group of uh, College from USA that I know they are working with uh, several institutions. I know that also in Bulgaria. So I will check later on because they are working specifically on training practitioners and not not only on attitudes, but that's uh, one of the levels they are working there. Um, and I think that's uh, well, that's something that that's everything for me. That I think this like a model of participatory research that I appreciate. I think that you would uh, you want to comment something. At the moment, um, my uh, point of view about the attitudes to the children from the family adoption family uh, and the children with the family parental families is uh, um, dominant in the discourse is uh, um, these children are um, okay. <laughs> okay. It's okay. It's okay. Don't press yourself. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. So it's okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Finally, it's me. Uh, congratulations for your presentation because this is like your work plan. But in the continuing what my colleagues were saying, what I believe when you choose parental conflicts in adoption, I think you have a name because you find something that's common between the two phenomena. Perhaps it's not quite parenting conflicts and adoption, it's that phenomenon that you are focused on. It's, for example, when you are talking about training specialists, I believe, I don't know, it's the, um, what type of skills and competency you want them to develop in order to, uh, res to, uh, to, um, uh, to, to, to follow this, uh, these families. Okay, so and I, it, as um, my colleague said before, it's very important because you are uh, trying to um, analyze what the what is needed in the field, and then to uh, have to uh, go with the needs and uh, to try to fulfill them again, like before. Since we have already some work developed, and they are in the, it's very interesting. Uh, Christina was saying to you to go to the platform, I believe this can be uh, important resources for you to apply, to adapt to your context and to use it in your research, because it's, it's uh, very, uh, the, the scope, it's, it's, uh, it's very large. So perhaps if you try to focus a little more, it will be more efficient, if, uh, uh, effective in the end. So, but, Congratulations, it's not easy. And we are very happy to have you here. Yeah, yes. Any comments? Any comments? Yes. Uh, congratulations for your, uh, for your proposal uh, to coincide with them that it is, uh, it is uh, uh, has a lot of expectations and I was needed to go into this training. As my presentation this morning was about this, um, these two guides uh, to help uh, uh, professionals to reflect and to get uh, training in, in their com competencies and best practices. Um, I think these two guides maybe could be helpful for you uh, when you try to organize and train in course. Uh, the, the, the two guides are to be available for you, of course, so I invite you to, to have a look to, to them. Uh, they are already translated into English, so you, you should really try to translate it into your language or pick up some, some ideas from that. 
and I hope uh, you would uh, you could have some uh, insights from from that. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Problems. What problems? Yeah. I jump. Yeah, jump. Yeah, Sorry. just to say as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, just just to, just to observe. Um, what you said, I think it's it, there's a, a relationship between Carmen's presentation earlier, because I think to understand adoption in a country uh, and the context of the adoption, as you said, it, and Bulgaria is relatively speaking on a, a scale of, you know, uh, national income lower, because Ireland has a deep uh, history of, you know, adoption and inter-country adoption. But the experience of adoption in that context and the training of professionals is quite different, I guess, from what it would be in Bulgaria. And adoption probably has a different, slightly different cultural meaning and context. I think that's really, it makes it maybe more challenging as well than to say, well, let's just take that idea from that context and apply it here. So mm -hmm. I think that really looking to the context and understanding the meaning of adoption and why is it the same or different to other countries, I think is an important consideration mm -hmm. to, to, to mm -hmm. think. Thanks. Thank you, Lundin. Thank you. The development of uh, competencies for family support with professionals uh, during their internship uh, in social protection system in the Serbia. Uh, since uh, 2013, uh, in Serbia, there has been a legal obligation for uh, continuous professional development uh, and uh, licensing of professionals in social uh, protection. Uh, after graduation uh, from faculty, students of social work, psychology, pedagogy, uh, and defectology have a legal obligation uh, of attending uh, internship uh, 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 for a period of uh, 12 months uh, in one of uh, social protection uh, institutions. Uh, they are also obliged to exam for license uh, and uh, that uh, can be ready for uh, work in social protection. Uh, since uh, the legal Ob obligation was introduced uh, in uh, Serbia, uh, its effects and uh, influence um, uh, of um, uh, is to, oh, oh my God. <laughs> an influence on improvement of competencies uh, of professionals uh, and um, uh, including family support. There has not uh, been uh, examined yet, uh, and uh, that's uh, our job. Um, the main problem is the fact uh, there are no uh, spe special standards uh, for uh, family support uh, and so special competencies uh, of family support professionals uh, in uh, Serbia. In the first step, you can see objectives and the research questions uh, uh, of the my research. Uh, general uh, objective uh, is the identification of factors and the mode of their uh, impact uh, on competencies uh, development for family support uh, and uh, determination and assessment uh, in which extent these competencies are being developed uh, during internship uh, with professionals uh, in social protection. Uh, in, in this research, uh, uh, mixed method and quasi-experimental design uh, are being uh, used. Uh, research um, contains two phases, uh, quantitative and qualitative. Currently, uh, I conduct pilot research in order to improve um, research tools. Uh, Professor Jagarac, who, who is my supervisor and me, created the classification of competencies for family support and indicators. So in a pilot research, we evaluate them. After that, first phase includes quantitative research. We will, will be realized with professionals at the beginning of internship 
uh, control groups and um, uh, with the professionals um, uh, that uh, completed the internship uh, in a social protection uh, experimental group. Um, in uh, this uh, phase, uh, sample will be consisted um, at uh, least um, 60 professionals uh, in uh, experimental and 60 professionals and um, control group. Um, after that, uh, uh, second phase uh, second phase includes qualitative research for a better understanding and experimentation uh, on um, development competences process and uh, factors of development. Uh, the aim uh, uh, is uh, fill up data from phase one. Uh, in this phase, a uh, sample will consist um, to 10 uh, uh, of of 10 to 15 uh, professionals uh, in experimental group uh, and their mentors and supervisors. Also in this phase uh, we, we will um, analyze uh, uh, their um, individual plans of development or um, working programs. Uh, we want to uh, find out changes uh, in development uh, competencies uh, uh, after uh, the after uh, professionals uh, completed the uh, internship in social uh, protection, uh, this is a research. Uh, um, uh, this is a research conduct uh, signi significant uh, for science found, uh, and uh, it depends uh, knowledge uh, about um, competences development process uh, and uh, fa uh, and development factors. And that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, congratulations for your presentation and for your work. Um, I believe that uh, you, you have a triangulation and uh, this type of research is very important because you have different well point of views uh, in regard to the phenomenon that you are studying. So I find it very interesting that you are um, um, monitoring, studying professionals uh, in social protective system in regard to, to their internship because it's a very important process. Yeah. Uh, it's the beginning of their of their work, professional work. So it's uh, it's um, it's. I think they are more perhaps more um, adaptable and also more uh, change. Well, I don't. Yeah. I, the word it's not easy to come <laughs> now, but it, they are more um, um, motivated for yeah, change. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I was yeah. too permissive, but not permissive. Yeah. 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 Permeable. Oh. Permeable. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, just um, so a few questions. Uh, you have a quasi-experimental study <coughs> design. So you have an intervention or an experimental group and a control. What is the difference? Because I do not understand, it was not clear to me, perhaps mm -hmm. it was to me. What what is the difference between them? What is the intervention? What what, what are you monitoring that it's different in both groups? Uh, 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 there is internship mm -hmm. and uh, factor uh, factors uh, development uh, of factors uh, during internship. Okay, so you have, for example, a, a training program or something of the internship. Uh, internship is a training program. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Sorry, Sonia, yes. yes. it was not clear to me. Yes. Okay. okay, thank you. Um, and uh, you have a pre and post. And uh, what I'm saying is, I think it's uh, interesting that you are monitoring this process. Mm -hmm. Perhaps, well, I think of, uh, in the future, follow up because mm -hmm. to see if it's, it's, it's consistency, these changes remain. What type of changes are you identifying and if remain? And also, uh, you, um, it's uh, also, uh, you have several variables that are involving in this type of. Uh, of process, mm -hmm. individual one, situation, contextual, yes. and uh, uh, hope you are uh, designing to control most of it. So, in order to, for you to have a more uh, accurate analysis in the end mm -hmm. of, the, yes. of the work, and again, the fact that you uh, also give in um, the 
give uh, a space for uh, an insight about their own experience. It's uh, very interesting because the process is co-constructive. So mm -hmm. it's very interesting that you are contemplating. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Lucia, please. Congratulations for the work. I think okay. that is very interesting and very useful. So I thank you for developing. Um, I, I didn't understood that was longitudinal, so it is, so you are planning to no, have a pre-post. No, 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 it's a in a section. Um, uh, it's not um, uh, long to do. It's three groups. Yes. Final one? Uh, at the uh, end? Uh, the no, one I, I have uh, one group, experimental and control uh, group. So my doubt is how can you confirm that the results come from the intervention if you cannot compare pre and post? Mm -hmm. I think that's uh, something that is going to be a challenge for yes. the study and for the publication. I think that in some occasions people use, I don't know if you are planning to use a, how they say, uh, when you ask in the home. Uh, retrospective pre-test. I would consider that option if you have the possibility only to ask once, because if you have only one measure, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a weakness to, to publish the, the results. Mm -hmm. So that's that recommendation. And I, I think it's very relevant that you are seeing what are they doing in practice, because we were talking about the implicit theories of practitioners and how this course is different in practice. Mm -hmm. And also that relates to the transfer to daily life. So I think that's a follow-up measure for me that this could be the best one, that you are saying, if you have the possibility to do it, not immediately, but maybe in a few months, you could say this is mid-term or long-term, or long -term. so that could be uh, considered a follow-up measure. Um, and I have a doubt about the, well, before that, I guess that you were searching through Gpower or whatever, why 60 people apart from dominions, I guess that's because mm -hmm. you are checking the power of the analysis you want to perform. Yes. So just to be sure for that, and also the saturation of contents for the quality piece. And I wanted to ask you a little bit more about empathy. Well, first is, I think it's very interesting that you are using specific measures in the qualitative piece. Yes, so yes I, do, I do use, um, so, yes. so you have, uh, you know, a, a conceptual framework to see, I want to see this and this and this. So, so yeah, congratulations yeah. for that. But I was wondering, what do you mean by empathy? And um, in this case, I, I don't know. And, and what's relevant for you? <laughs> Yes, um, uh, we, we have planned to uh, to find out um, uh, how uh, empathy. Which what do you mean empathy between uh, the trainer empathy, and the trainee? Uh, uh, which uh, is quality? Uh, who uh, which uh, we are um, evaluate? Uh, we will evaluate um, uh, with professionals at the beginning uh, and uh, after complete. So empathy as a personal trait. Yes, yes, yes. So yes, with family. Yes, yes. Okay. okay. And uh, we use uh, we do use uh, uh, instruments uh, who, uh, which exist uh, in um, Serbian language. Mm -hmm. uh, we use uh, these instruments uh, in um, in uh, our research. I think that's very interesting because you know the alliance and I guess you are choosing yeah. that because it's yeah. one of the most proven variables. Yeah. There is a team that is working on alliance that I don't remember the name, but they have very op uh, operationalized how to measure, mm -hmm. self-measure and also to be reported by families. Mm -hmm. So okay. maybe we can discuss in, in case you consider it useful because or I don't know, maybe you are interested in empathy particularly, mm -hmm. but as a construct that is included in the in the professional alliance, maybe it's relevant. Yes, uh, I don't know. thank you. Can you say yes, me? Yes, yes, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> Prinlander is, I don't know if you are familiar with the college, please, mm -hmm. I would enjoy it. No. Okay, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. So, I like it very much, I think, well, I mean, working group four, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, working about. Yes, yeah, working about competencies is, is very much of my interest. I was wondering, um, the internship, these uh, social workers are working with families already during mm -hmm. their internship. Yes, in maybe, institutions. So yes, organization. Maybe, yeah. maybe you could have some question to the families that they mm -hmm. will work. Mm -hmm. And you have, um, in that way, another information about them. I don't know, mm -hmm. maybe. Uh, or I, I thought that maybe it would, 
I don't know because of course 12 months is a lot so you don't you don't you can't uh, prolong so much the collect uh, uh, of the data but maybe it's another source of, of information about what did they feel mm -hmm. um, and what I don't understand but maybe it's my problem um, is how that work about the control group because I understand that you are uh, asking people in the initial of their internship mm -hmm. and at the end mm -hmm. to the same group. Uh, uh, it's not the same. Uh, okay. Not same group, yeah. But the control. Difficult, yeah. Uh, but the control group who is initial time. Another group. Um, uh, it's another group. Yes, another group who um, finish uh, finish the internship uh, one uh, month. Uh, at the one month, uh, previously, yes, yes. No. I think maybe in the future, Marika wants to add. Yeah, yeah. just to explain. Uh, so the uh, experience uh, control group is the the uh, interns who just start, who yes. just the finish beginning. the faculty and start. Okay, it's the control. Yeah. Yes. yes, and the uh, intervention is uh, these those who just finish internship? Not thinking of it. Just the first summer, sorry. What the internship did? Okay. With people who just came from university. Yeah. And okay. From and you don't passion. Okay. Okay. Now I understand. Yeah. Okay. So congratulations. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, it's my uh, PhD topic, Parenting uh, Practice of Roma Families in the uh, Republic of Serbia. Uh, why I choose uh, this topic? Uh, because some research from uh, 2014 showed that uh, Roma families used in about 66% uh, violent method of discipline use uh, physical and psychological uh, punishment uh, in uh, our in uh, children, which is uh, significant, uh, significantly uh, higher than uh, general population. And in 43% uh, uh, percent, uh, these uh, families has positive, uh, uh, positive attitude. I'm sorry. Attitude. Sorry. <laughs> About uh, use uh, violence. Uh, parenting practice in uh, my uh, research is operationalization of, uh, with two ways, uh, uh, with a uh, set of parental goals, uh, uh, activities, parental style, uh, style, it's a mistake, no education, okay. uh, parental styles and uh, wilds, and uh, with concept of uh, nurturing care. This concept uh, has five uh, domination, uh, health, uh, nutrition, responsive caregivers, security and safety, and uh, opportunities for early learning for children. Uh, uh, this two uh, framework has some um, interaction and uh, about that we uh, choose instruments uh, for uh, research uh, uh, method. Uh, method uh, the research uh, design is a mix uh, uh, and has uh, three phases. In the first phase, uh, the, uh, the goal is to describe characteristics of uh, parenting pra uh, practice, uh, parenting style, social emotional commitment, violence, and attitudes. Uh, attitudes. I don't know. <laughs> 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 we understand. <laughs> Perfect. We understand. <laughs> Attitudes about parenting in the Roma families, uh, demographic variables uh, like the social economic status, educational of parents, age of parents, age of children, number of children, uh, gender of um, uh, of parents, gender of uh, um, uh, children, and that is uh, yes. Uh, simple uh, is. Um, 
to uh, 2000 families from Novi Sad, Belgrade, uh, Subotica and Niš. Now I'm in these spaces uh, near the end. <laughs> And it's so hard to search people uh, with uh, different um, social uh, economical style uh, status because um, uh, there are uh, so many family with low social economical status, and I uh, have the problem <laughs> to search other uh, other families. A second phase uh, is a qualitative. And uh, this, uh, and I use focus groups with um, 30, uh, 32 uh, parents from Novi Sad, Subotica, Belgrade, and Niš, who was um, included uh, in the first uh, phases. And with focus groups, I want uh, to uh, research some order. I want to uh, uh, I want to examine uh, do and how Roma families use uh, family support programs and services. Uh, in our country, it is uh, programs uh, from uh, social welfare system, uh, health system, uh, educational system, and non-government uh, system. And uh, three phases uh, is um, qualitative tools with uh, 64 uh, profession professionals uh, which is uh, employed in different systems, uh, social welfare, health, uh, educational and non-government. Uh, I want to collect the data about um, um, perspective from uh, profession uh, professionals, how uh, they uh, see uh, needs, of uh, parent, of Roma families for support and uh, how these families use formal and informal parenting uh, support. And for the space, we translate some uh, questionnaires and um, adapt it for uh, language uh, in Roma families uh, because they don't understand mm -hmm. uh, um, so many Serbian words. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, and so, uh, we um, do this question like an interview because some uh, parents mm -hmm. is illiterate. Yeah. 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 Yes, yeah. one of my questions here is yeah. about this <laughs> woman. So, yeah, you anticipate. <laughs> so, I forgot you. that. Okay. So, Milani, congratulations for the work uh, you presented. I. I think that uh, the fact that you are uh, reaching for um, a specific community, Roman family, it's it's uh, very interesting and not so easy because also in our country we have yeah. also a very representative community uh, of uh, Roman families, and it's not easy to to reach and to work. And we have special programs and projects to work with them. So congratulations you. for your project. Yes, I was I was joking. I was saying sample sampling like yesterday. So you have uh, it's not um, an easy uh, community to reach, and not only because of uh, to to have access, but also because of the instruments and all the design that we must adapt and yeah. be aware of in order to them to comprehend and to be very accessible. So otherwise, it can be a bias in your in your study. So this is. Uh, and then one of my question marks was, okay, what kind of instruments? Because you were saying about the framework, you were identifying values and goals and activities and parenting styles, mm -hmm. because you were speaking about the important, the, the practice, the family practice in, in uh, f the, and their perception of phys perception and practice of physical and psychological punishment. I don't know. Um, because, for example, we have another study in Calvary with women links, the study from Vienna, and she was uh, trying to intervene, intervene in this type of phenomenon. It's not easy because it's cultural and you, you have lots of uh, other um, factors. Yes, that... and for some context, we don't have a word uh, to uh, explain for family. Oh, okay, so language is also. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yes. So, uh, well, again, as you said before, uh, Lucia. Yes, the challenge now. Yes, a brave. Brave, brave. We yeah. must describe some uh, practice and uh, uh, we uh, okay. lost uh, 
so many time for for uh, collecting that. Um, one question, for example, sometimes I saw several projects that use uh, mediators, community mediators, yeah. to yes. help researchers enrich some communities. Yes, we have um, uh, Roma health uh, mediators, and it is a contact uh, person for me okay. in Noisa, uh, Belgrade, Subotic, and uh, and they uh, go with us for collected data. Yeah, yes, I know. Yeah, this is important because. I think your design must be, you must design the, the study very carefully. We know the, the, its aspects, not only the sample, but also the, the instruments and the questions. And if they really understand what you are asking in order to the, the data collected can be more uh, uh, valid and, uh, and, and uh, of confidence. Okay, so congratulations and uh, I hope to see results you. Yeah. in the future. So. Thank you. Ms. Anna, thank you for your presentation. I like very much the topic. I think it's very important. I think it's very difficult also. Um, I agree with, uh, with uh, Katya. I think it, would be, it will be a challenge to achieve and get um, the right instruments to measure the dimensions you have defined. Maybe you can think and uh, to use not uh, traditional or inclusive validated instruments, but construct some, utilize them, but construct some and yes. new ones and a creative ones. For instance, with vignettes. We did it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> because that's a good thing. Um, other thing is, uh, I see that you have in your mind to produce some catalog. I think mm -hmm. that's very useful. I mentioned that the catalog should be uh, it would be to the um, professionals no uh, no uh, from uh, parents from parents for oh it's for parents. for parents yeah but maybe you can think in mm -hmm. to professionals mm -hmm. it would be a nice thing yes. more than a catalog to parents be why because their par parents maybe they have a low level of education and writing materials i don't think it's the best thing to them but for professionals, with some guidelines, do um, what are the characteristics of this uh, group, of these parents? What needs they have? Uh, how can we work with them? Maybe it's an idea. More work for you, okay? Um, one other thing there are now, there are, I don't know if you are familiar, some tools that helps to make um, thematic analysis of a focus group, yes. a tools, instruments uh, that make that automatic. You, you software? have to learn? Yeah, software, software. Like evil, like yeah? Yeah. If you want, I can give you some reference, a free instrument yeah, that like calls Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank, thank you and congratulations. Thank you. I would also to congratulate. I think we have, uh, well, we are here because we trust in family support and in families. <laughs> And in the, in the groups of vulnerable families, I think Roma families are one, yes. at least in your country and in our most stigmatized. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to be very careful on sure you are, you are being in the messages we are giving to society. So I'm asking for extra careful on that. I would like to see strengths also in your mm -hmm. introduction and in when asking families what are their strengths and on that regard, and one of my uh, suggestions would be, would you consider to start with the qualitative study? Mm -hmm. So you are not going with your cultural lens, talking before about what do you think are parental practices and so on, mm -hmm. but asking families mm -hmm. what they think are, is relevant for reading a child, what they're doing, and so on. And I'm now reiterating with colleges. I think for me here, uh, action, community participatory approach probably is a good one. I don't know if you're familiar with the Roma Matter project. It's a European level project. Uh, with Roma families, and all the they have also a toolbox as we have. All the well, they have collaborated with us. We have a video on there on our website, and they have uh, all the materials are free. They are using photo voice technique, for example. So it's a research uh, transformation or, or all the same intervention uh, uh, activity. And I would go even a step further. So maybe you can consider uh, art-based methods for research and also for intervention. So not only focus groups or questionnaires because are not that verbal based. And I can give you some examples working with TikTok, with storytelling, 
uh, with uh, graffitis. And, and yeah. you know, it's a different way to approach. And my experience, because I have been involved in this project, it, this maybe is, is very national based and it's not the same in Serbia. So, also interested to hear about that. In the case of the Roma population, the, it's not the NGOs, it's the, um, well, the associations of Roma people mm -hmm. have a lot of power and are so relevant for community. So if I suggest that you plan to include them, and we have some challenges at the beginning of when we start with, with them uh, working and really hear what they uh, want and what they need, and to include us as active agents, not only families, but the, um, and also the, what do you say, the leaders, leaders. Leaders in the just the leaders yeah. of the community, but I mean the, the, the angels and also the religious leaders that are also very relevant one in the community. Yeah. So my suggestion for uh, yeah. all families. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, and, and I have some comments about the, the, the sample of questionnaires and so on, but that has been real. Um, and as I told you in the Roma Matter project, I, I think so close that it was, you can ask me how, because you use some quantitative data at the end, but for example, we did a factorization of uh, global questionnaires and just select the items that uh, were more relevant. Yes, more yeah. relevant. And then you use pictures, as you say, vignettes, and we did online. And so a lot of sophistication to, to, to try to adapt. So I think this is your support. Thank you. And congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Any questions? Everybody yeah. <laughs> I just thought I have a quick question. We did some work a long time ago about um, migrant families in Northern Ireland and we had an ecological approach and we, we said, well, it was about the families themselves, it was about services, it was about policy and we looked at the different layers and so on. So I suppose that's one thing just to think about how does policy uh, enable or constrain support for, mm -hmm. for Roma families, I suppose, is, is one question. But the other thing that we didn't achieve, and I think, you know, a, a lot of the discourse uh, is, well, it's them, and they're the problem, and, and yes, so on. Yes, yes. And, and, and that, that when you talk to professionals and people who work in state services, those biases, uh, yeah. unconscious or other, might be there, there might be social desirability and responses. Oh no, we are. We do everything for them. <laughs> you know that kind of response. So I think there's a lot of care required to create valid uh, data in in those that particular context. If, if you in our country, a problem created uh, and not fit to needs uh, for Roma families, and it's a problem too. Mm -hmm. uh, and because of that, I uh, want to. Uh, mm -hmm exam and uh, perspective of professionals uh, 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 about politics in our country we uh, have uh, many documents but they are not uh, uh, in practice yeah. use uh, we have uh, uh, just a moment <laughs> a, na a na national program uh, mm. for the uh, advisement of early childhood, mm -hmm. uh, childhood uh, development from 2018 and um, with these documents we uh, define the needs for childhood about uh, nutrition, uh, healthy development, um, um, relationships with parents and something like that and uh, have documents with, uh, which um, created a framework for a material um, material yeah. yeah. help for mm -hmm. material yes. help for yes. family. Yes. Yeah. And it is, uh, that is all uh, mm -hmm. what we now so have. There, so there isn't any specific or culturally sensitive or, 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 or focused on the needs of Maroma families? Yes, a congregation professor. <laughs> Thank you. I, I would like you, if you can share briefly about your experience in working with Roma families, mm -hmm. because she's not just like a mm -hmm. someone who's yeah. yes. yes. practice. Yeah. practice with them.
In the last time I work with uh, uh, in a non-government uh, service, which are my families, and uh, be included in some projects for the support early uh, childhood mm -hmm. in these families. We created um, uh, projects that um, Ted Bears uh, reading uh, programs uh, and have campaigns Novi Sad reading for uh, children. Uh, in these programs, we support family. Um, in reading with uh, children, uh, it is uh, illiterally family, and uh, we support um, they for describe some pictures in uh, books and something like that. And uh, the point of this program is the uh, support development of children and um, social um, emotional uh, development, development mm -hmm. and uh, interaction sure. with uh, with. Uh, uh, with parents, uh, this uh, this program based on um, a concept of iniziare uh, sbratti, iniziare sbratti, initiate and get back, get back from an angel public service or what's being uh, heard? Sorry, I, I'm from which sector I mean you are working for no, an no, no, job and it's a public service, so it's not governmental. Mm. Okay. Yes? It is. Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> just, just curious maybe. Um, in, first of all, I think the topic is really relevant and uh, to many extent still somehow a secret. Uh, not, not, it's not outspoken, so I'm very happy that uh, it's, it's taken into consideration. I just got a question and I want to ask you the communities you are you are working with, how mobile are they territorially? Uh, now in Serbia uh, this family stay uh, okay. here. Uh, and uh, in these um, communities, uh, I uh, choose families who stayed long, long time in uh, Serbia, who don't uh, migration. Yeah, but well, if here inside five hundred years or maybe yeah. more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They so, were here. Okay, so mobility <laughs> also within uh, Serbian borders is not an issue. For no, those kind no. of communities. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, Serve and return in context. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. And then now you were you are intervening the mothers and the fathers, or you are just for both? Both. Yeah. In some family, uh, some mothers, some uh, some father, uh, but uh, in uh, some uh, family we uh, have uh, opportunities for. Both, uh, parents. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's also interesting if you take into account the gender of the child because mm -hmm. I don't know, I volunteered, it's not like work, but with Roma families mm -hmm. and they have very different views mm -hmm. with what yeah. they wanted yeah. for the girls, for example. So oh, it was yeah. in different ways, so maybe yeah. you can take that into account. Yes. <laughs> Any more questions? No? So thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.